Welcome back to this video podcast edition of 12 Days in March. This material was delivered during a series of live lectures at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In this edition, we will focus on pseudogout for the USMLE Step 1 exam, and let me tell you, there isn't too much to focus on. As with all presentations, a PDF of this recording is available at the 12 Days website. And as a reminder, 12 Days is now offering tutorial services. For anyone interested, please check the website for details. Before launching this presentation, I should highlight the synovial fluid analysis in both gout and pseudogout. The joint diffusion in both conditions is described as inflammatory. But what does that actually mean? Well, non-inflammatory, as seen in osteoarthritis, has few white blood cells present, and if they are present, less than 25% are PMNs. There are no bugs, there are no crystals. Septic effusions have lots of white cells. The numbers vary, but greater than 50,000 is pretty reasonable. The cell differential is usually described as greater than 90% PMNs. Organisms are also present, but what's more, no crystals will be described. So what is an inflammatory effusion? Basically anything between 3 and 50,000 with approximately 50% PMNs. No bugs will be present, and of crystalline arthropathy, crystals will be described. And here is the differential diagnosis of an inflammatory effusion. On the top part of the diagram, we see the two crystalline arthropathies. The bottom part of the diagram shows the other key conditions you are most likely to encounter on step one, including seronegative spondyloarthropathy, rheumatoid arthritis, and Lyme arthritis. Remember, Lyme arthritis presents with an inflammatory, not a septic effusion. The arthritis is a reactive process to spirochete antigens. And with this background, we can now launch into a brief discussion of pseudogout. All righty, so that's gout. Those are all the players on gout. There's a lot of things they can do with gout, certainly diagnostic and treatment-wise. So pseudogout is quite a bit less exciting. What's exciting to me about pseudogout, the name is good because that means it presents like gout but doesn't tell you the pathway, chondrocalcinosis, calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, so it's got a couple of pseudonyms, um, but chondrocalcium, chondrocartilage, calcium, so they got these crystals that deposit, calcium pyrophosphate that deposit in the cartilage. This is the only picture in the whole entire world of a, a calcium pyrophosphate crystal actually depositing in cartilage, okay? You know, their positive uh, birefringence doesn't really matter because they're described as uh, rhomboid crystals as opposed to needles. Associated with other conditions, they never asked that. Big ticket item, this is as deceiving as they can get with chondrocalcinosis. Here are those calcium deposits in uh, the cartilage seen on a radiograph. So radio-opaque line within the hyaline cartilage. That's like the radiolucency line in someone who has a pneumothorax. So radio-opaque line within cartilage. That's the only thing that's going to do a lot. So what happens is someone can have an acute attack. So acute pseudogout, you treat almost like you were treating gout in terms of abortive therapy. When it's discovered just asymptomatically in someone who has degenerative symptoms, you just treat it as if it were osteoarthritis. The, the, one the one exception is right here, the pseudo-rheumatoid condition. So if they present with this rheumatoid arthritis-like condition in a patient with a pseudogout, then those patients you wind up using preventative therapy, which is basically coltracine. That is it. There's not too much else going on with pseudogout. Honestly, the purpose of pseudogout is compare and contrast with gout. So they're going to set you up for a gout and then go on ahead and describe some different crystal, and you guys are uh, attuned to that. And that concludes this discussion of pseudocout for USMLE Step 1. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 days. Thank you.